So bank run is not uh, something that you very often see, well, at least not in uh, the Western uh, Europe countries, but which I've already seen once in my life. So they actually do happen. <laughs> and of course they happen a lot uh, across the countries where you can't or where the, where the banks have a much less uh, degree of trust among the citizens, right? Where the banks have proven to uh, basically screw uh, bank owners or bank account owners over and over before, like in Argentina, currently in Venezuela, in, in uh, I don't know, in Zambia or Zimbabwe, where was it again? Sorry for the, the Zimbabwe, sorry for that one. Um, let me check, because we have fractional reserve, reserve banking, you can trump down any bank because they don't have the money that they have in the ledgers because of the multiplier effect. And because, of course, the assets are not always tangible assets, but sometimes are intangible assets based upon another debt, as we've seen with these collaterals. If you want to learn more about intangible assets and how they caused the, the big crisis in 2008, I would definitely uh, watch uh, or recommend uh, The Big Short. Very interesting and funny movie as well, which basically explains it quite well in an entertaining, entertaining way. We will update the link for you in the uh, further reading. So, um, let me check. A bank run is quite simple. If everybody goes to the bank and wants to withdraw money, the bank goes down. We've seen this with the, the DSB, DSB in the Netherlands. All of a sudden, the trust was lost in the bank. Everybody start transferring money. Of course, nowadays, not only um, actually go to the ATM, but also in digital ways. So go in your online bank account, withdraw the money, send it to your other bank. And then, of course, the bank can't pay anymore because the trust of other banks also dropped down, etc. This is an um, increasing cycle. Interesting, though, is sometimes it just does not only happen to one bank. You can actually have an entire uh, systematic banking crisis. And that's what happened in 2008 when one bank fell down. Of course, this bank had also some uh, outstanding loans or outstanding payments to other banks, which they couldn't pay anymore. Therefore, uh, downsizing or downgrading the uh, asset side of the other banks and therefore tumbling over like dominoes. And then all of a sudden the banking system doesn't work anymore. And what is the solution? or what was the solution in 2008, just keep on printing more money, keep printing more money and eventually inflating uh, the currency and therefore saving a couple of banks. In this case, of course, not with the uh, payment of uh, salaries of banking uh, managers, but with eventually tax money because the government stepped in and actually bought the banks. Eventually, when the banks were back on their own feet, they bought them back. Whether it's a healthy thing or not is up for discussion. In my honest opinion, I do think that you should have a more uh, commercialized approach there. So banks shouldn't be too big to fail. Just let them fall because then actually you will have a uh, free economical um, philosophy. In other words, uh, let me rephrase, I told you it's quite hard for me to do this in English. But what I'm wanting to say here is that if a bank fails, probably there's a reason why that bank failed, because it didn't work or didn't had its risk prioritized, or it knew that it would be backed by the government, so it could take tremendous amounts of risks. Or um, eventually, if you, if you keep saving unhealthy organizations, you don't give healthy organizations the opportunity to prey on those unhealthy organizations. If you keep saving these, these un healthy uh, banks in this case, other healthy banks can't benefit of the demise of the other banks. So you're, 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 you're saving an unhealthy system there. And unfortunately for banks now, they are pretty much caught up between a decentralized variant, the, the Bitcoin variants and other cryptocurrencies. And of course, other new commercial parties entering the scene like Facebook and Amazon and uh, WeChat, etc., all offering payment services as well. The banks nowadays, the previous rules that kept them alive are now the rules that bend their, bind their hands. They can't actually do anything anymore because they are not allowed to uh, transact within the blockchain scene because they have to know all their customers, KYC. 
and they can't uh, compete, of course, with the two million users of a Facebook, right? So it's a very tough situation that the current banking systems are in, especially because the inflated money and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to keep with that regarding the, the bank runs, et cetera. We are doing a deep dive there in the all about money and all about monetary system. My colleague uh, Martijn van der Linden will do that session and we will interview him and we'll give this as a deep dive regarding this session. For now, uh, enjoy, by the way, these two additional slides where you can actually see how many uh, gold uh, each country has. So how many money is actually backed by gold, because gold does has intrinsic value. For so far, something has intrinsic value, of course. But bottom line here is, um, should the government um, step in? Let us know your opinion, because I truly want to learn there from you as well. But my opinion is um, a bit libertarian or a bit uh, free economy that uh, if something doesn't work, you should uh, basically let it fail. And of course, you should say you can save it once or perhaps give it a nudge into the right direction. But um, yeah, in time, I think it's the most, health, most healthiest way to create new systems that actually do work instead of keeping an unhealthy system alive. Let us know if you strongly agree or strongly disagree. And I want you to educate me on this subject, uh, subject as well. Let us hear from you.